Hello and welcome to the show. We are here at now. I can never pronounce this name right. I would have probably got it wrong. Uh, Rally de Postinato, something like that. I think I it's that know. roughly. Uh, let's, let's hope we've got that one right. Uh, for a challenge, I don't ask how I came up with this one, but I thought it would be quite fun to do. We have got here two 1,000 horsepower muscle cars. I am driving the Dodge Challenger. Daniel is driving the Daytona. Uh, these have both got the same yes. engines. Uh, they're the V10 from the Viper Competition Coupe. Uh, it's 1,031 horsepower, 1,000 torques. Now, these cars have not been <laughs> modified in any other way except for the engine. Uh, absolutely everything so, else on these cars is completely standard. Yep, standard uh, brakes, old oldie brakes, you know, from how old are these cars? I mean, they're oh, like 30 years old. God, no, they're more than old. that. For, uh, 53 yeah. years old so, in my Challenger. So. Everything else is stock. That is a 53-year-old chassis with 1,000 horsepower going through it around possibly the tightest, narrowest, twistiest circuit of them all. Uh, they sound very nice, they are very noisy. Um, and as we see off the line, much wheel spin! Uh, no. <laughs> Lots of wheel spin. <laughs> there is ridiculous amounts of wheel spin. As you will notice, Daniel's car is painted like a uh, whatever the one is from Cars! It's awesome! Um, I love I'm it. trying to think. The King, that's it. The, the King. That Dynaco, that's the one. Dynaco, yeah. It's, it's weird how I remember that. But yeah. <laughs> Cars is an awesome film. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's great. Um, so yes, as you can see, things are rather tricky. Um, interesting. The, yeah, interesting, tricky, slidey, sideways, scary stuff. There we go, all of them, all of the above. Um, the <laughs> Daytona is a slightly higher PI car. It's a very low A class, it's about 510. My Challenger is a relatively high B class at 474 PI. So I have got a thousand horsepower in a B class. That's mental. Um, that's impressive. To, <laughs> to be honest, that's in, really quite insane. Um, now, my theory is, okay, the Daytona was a race car, uh, it was a NASCAR, so it shouldn't really be going around corners, uh, but the Daytona is absolutely massive. Look at the length of that thing. Even the camera can't fit it all in one shot. It is a huge car. Uh, you found compared another wall to yours, there. it is massive. Yeah, I found, may have found a <laughs> slight wall, but yeah, compared to your car, it is huge. It's, it's what? 20 odd foot long? More than I, that, probably. God knows. It's, it's a ridiculous size sort of car. I mean, the Challenger uh, isn't particularly. You found a wall again there. Yeah, I found a wall. I found another wall. <laughs> Oh, we are experts at finding walls. Um, anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, the Challenger isn't exactly a small car, but it is uh, dwarfed by that, uh, that Daytona. So we are on lap two. Did I say we're doing a five-lap race? I don't even remember. I think it was we're a five-lap five race. To be fair, yeah, we are doing a five-lap race. To be fair, my wing is the size of your car anyway. Yeah. So the, the, sort of <laughs> the wing on that Daytona is ridiculous. Uh, and downforce? Is it producing lots of downforce? Can you feel the grip? It produces nothing. It no, does nothing. absolutely nothing <laughs> at all. So to all of you people who put massive spoilers on your cars, even the biggest spoiler in the world doesn't do anything, so don't bother. It's a waste of time. It doesn't, honestly. But uh, the thing I, is, I don't <laughs> particularly think that that will do anything because it's so high. The, I, does it do anything? Aero people, you should know I, this. I presume, if it works. I presume there was a reason for that. Uh, so let's talk history. Oh, God, a scary thought. We'll probably get this wrong and people <laughs> will shout at us. Uh, so the, the Challenger uh, was one of the last uh, sort of really I powerful... Oh, you've gone in the wall again. No, I'm a huge amount of love. Whee, whoopsie daisy. Uh, there's a wall there. Um, as there was a sort of the decline in muscle car, the muscle car period didn't really last very long. Um, they, it kind of started off with a few cars, and then everybody tried to jump in on the act, and then they became sort of too expensive, and there were too many restrictions on emissions, and, and muscle cars kind of died out. The Challenger is sort of one of the last few sort of really properly powerful muscle cars. I think the Firebird was the last one, uh, to actually have decent numbers of horsepower. I think they carried on to like 71 or 72. It had decent numbers of horsepower. The Mustangs, sort of at that area, were starting going down and Camaros were all going down. Um, and so yeah, the Challenger is one of the better handling of the muscle cars, it has to be said. It's one of the lighter two, 3,700 pounds. Uh, that is quite <laughs> a lot compared to the normal light cars in we relative drive. Terms. Uh, yeah, but it is quite light for a muscle car. Now the charge is it Charger Daytona or just a Daytona? I can't hold this. I think it's the Charger Dodge. Daytona. Yeah, the Daytona. That was designed to be a NASCAR. Uh, it was a very successful Nothing NASCAR. Else. Um, it now hopefully I've got this right. It was the first car ever to hit 200 miles an hour on a closed oval circuit, which I think is a pretty good, impressive feat. It's impressive how old that car is. 
Uh, he was doing 200 yeah. miles an hour. But that's not the, the sort of the fact that I'm interested in with this car. Okay, the, the fact that I, I really quite like about this is when this car was released, you could buy one of these for the road. It was practically identical to the one that was raced in NASCAR. You know, NASCAR, one of the biggest motorsport, probably the biggest motorsport in the world actually, has the biggest audience. You could buy one of these for the road for $4,000. That's just insane. Admittedly, back then, money was worth slightly different, so yes, it, it would have cost more, but still, that's insane. Sort of insane value so you, of money. you could buy a race car? Yeah, you could buy a, if a you do road that now. legal race car. God, there's no what's, what's the closest? Caparo T1, maybe? It's a road legal race car. Yeah, and how much is that? That's uh, ridiculously priced. Quite a few hundred thousand. It's also insanely hard to drive, apparently. Um, not that I've ever driven yeah. one. Uh, I can't imagine that Daytona, though, is much easier. Uh, <laughs> so, what well, level are you on now? Uh, four. Uh, I think this was lap four. The three, four. You should have a lap counter. What's wrong with you? I, yeah. Um, I, I should put a lap counter in the top You need to do some clever editing and put it in there. But yeah, I oh. think this is lap four. And the Daytona actually, from us blabbing on and waffling, the Daytona stayed in front for pretty much four of the five laps I think and then you overtook on like the first lap or something yeah I, I can't think remember I led for about half a lap and then crashed it's kind of weird driving these th this thing um, when I was following you like I followed you for like the first lap and it was fine and the minute I got in the lead I started doing silly things it's like a psychological thing once you're in the leads you have to kind of push harder uh, so I think this I'm, oh god I hope this is coming on to the last lap now I thought I was going to sound like an idiot so I was actually we falling do, quite a far way behind about. Um, and you managed to find a wall and I kind of decided to push because I love muscle cars and I couldn't be beaten uh, so it was a very very close final lap this one I was surprised it incredibly close actually yeah it's considering there is sort of 40 pi difference in these two uh, admittedly you know sort of the length of that Daytona is kind of interesting uh, around here <laughs> these cars are blooming hard to drive uh, I, I mean say that. around here I mean they must have been you know, okay, I'm not exactly... I'm not a big fan of NASCAR particularly. You know, it's just, for as far as I can see, it's just turning left. But, I mean, this must have been ridiculously hard to drive, turning just left, you know, just one corner. When you got right and left turns and braking and stuff, it this is just insane to drive. And because of the fact that it's a million foot long and handles like a boat, and I found a wall there as well, <laughs> um... It's, it's it's impossible. Especially with a thousand horsepower. That doesn't help either. Yes. I don't know how much horsepower the things ran in NASCAR. Uh, somebody will know. Was it uh, 600? Possibly back there. I don't know. This is the final corner and look how close it is. But the Daytona is going to win. It was incredibly close. Uh, it was incredibly <laughs> close for sort of seven minutes of racing. Uh, so oh, that was all with assists off. It was manual and clutch. So I would suggest go try it yourself. Uh, go get a Dodge. Uh, I can't remember what other muscle cars, but any muscle car really that will put out like 900 odd horsepower. Go out, get one of them and then have a go around that track is insane. Um, it will teach you throttle control on Forza. If you can drive that, you can drive anything. It will, yes. Is, uh, it <laughs> pretty much the will. case. I think now, the only thing that comes close to doing... Sorry. The only thing that comes close to like stock that is like throttle control is a V8 supercar. Yeah, because they're V8 supercar is well. another one that you will learn it. Now, we couldn't just leave it there because it was going to be quite a short video. So we came up with another competition. We were going to have a sort of burnout competition. We were going to see who could create the longest skid marks. Just ignore the slightly teleporting cone there. Uh, laggy replays. <laughs> <laughs> it's portal. It. Uh, yeah, we've got a portal cone. Um, anyway, yes, we're going to have a burnout competition. See if we do the longest 11 skid marks. Um, but there were kind of some issues. Uh, trying to set this up, there's no real good way of measuring it. Uh, so I'm trying to park a car, like park my car, and then Daniel will have his car so that the sort of uh, distance counter says zero feet. The problem is, at this point, it doesn't really register very well. So when Daniel's parked there, it was like minus 20 feet, which wasn't really helpful. So... This is a little bit wonky. I'm going to be honest, this isn't very easy to measure. Uh, it was so, weird. Uh, yeah, it was horrendously hard. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> it's confusing. Honestly. I'm not sure. I'm just leaving sort of some skid marks there so we know where to measure the cars from. Uh, we're going to cut to a different, slightly different camera now. Uh, so yes, the idea is we're going, to see, we're going to do a best of three competition and see who can do the longest skid marks. Now both these cars have identical engines in them, but of course they're going to be running different tyres, they're different chassis, different weights. I don't even remember what your weight of your car was. Uh, uh, so, lighter than yours. Yeah, probably. Uh, so we're going to have a go. I will point out now there is some slightly laggy replays going on here uh, with Daniel's car. It's Forza being funny. As Yay for normal. internet. Uh, yeah, the, the replays are never very good. And there we go. That was the first run. 
for the Daytona, and now you're going to fall off the rock. Come on, I get better turning circle than that. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's got the turning circle of like Jupiter. It's shite. It is. It is pretty poor. Uh, and then it comes to the part of trying to find where your skid marks were. This was probably what took the longest of this entire thing. I got confused. Okay, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> I was confused and I couldn't see because of that. I have an excuse actually. Oh, because yeah, you I'm have running an excuse on such now. a. Yeah, because I'm running on such a crappy TV, I couldn't see the skin marks. It's so bad and not in high it definition. Is, it is pretty hard, especially when the track's all different colours and like the, the tarmac was all different colours. Uh, so the the idea was we'd then park our cars sort of lengthways, and then we would I'd write down the distance, and that was how we would measure them. They're not the most accurate measurements. Uh, I'm going to be honest, uh, <laughs> but this is all we can do. Uh, and we thought it'd be interesting for a bit of fun. So it was the turn of the Challenger. Out, and we're going to see what we can do. Uh, we are trying these various different methods. Uh, the first one was going through the gears, and this quite a long skid mark, and we're going a little bit sideways, and there we go. And now I have to try and find mine. Uh, it's not easy to try and see them on the track. I'm also not quite no. sure with laggy replays how they appear. Hopefully on the replay they'll come across all right. Uh, and then, yeah, where are they gone? They're somewhere over there. Uh, we were doing it to the first break in them. So as you'll see, like one time may spin a little bit longer. We were measuring them to the first break in the sort of line, whatever so you want to call it. I can't see your, I can't see your skin mark at all. Probably the fact that I'm buffering this video in 240p because my Ooh, internet is you've so got great bad. Internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> there, this is attempt. What's number this? Number two for the Daytona, and it's doing some more. And it's it wasn't the greatest attempt that one. Um, no, it wasn't. It was your, your first attempt was very good, I have to say. The second attempt wasn't quite I was as impressive. Surprised with the first attempt, yeah. Yeah, and then it's off to sort of find them and measure them, and that took forever, so I cut it out. All right, I should have found this camera angle earlier. This is much better for showing it. Now I adopted a slightly different technique, rather than sort of starting first and going up the gears. Uh, starting third, I mean, there's more than enough power to get this thing going, and then you could do sort of a long burnout and not have to worry about your gears, and then you have to go find it again wherever it's gone. Oh yay, <laughs> somewhere over That's there. That's the trickiest part. It was. It was honestly the trickiest part of this whole challenge was trying to see where your blooming uh, skids are. This is a much better and camera angle. Yeah, this is much better. I should have thought this earlier. And here we go for attempt number three, and I don't really know what happened there for you. That was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think my, um, my, uh, this, this is when I chose one gear, and I decided to choose third, and I thought, oh, quick, if I do it right, I can get up to fourth. And I changed down when it was going too slow, and I it just, just still died. So uh, it's like was a hundred foot. Wasn't it? Yeah. it was. It was. Uh, uh, was it gone? 158 foot. That was the worst of all. Of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> still, not too bad. And this is attempt number three for the challenger. It goes a little bit sideways and a little bit skew with. A little there. bit sideways. You drifted. <laughs> Drifting in a straight line. Only a muscle car. Uh, and there we go. And somewhere over there was skid mark. So the results. Have a guess at home. Uh, how long those distances were. Uh, the best result for the Daytona was 470 foot. That is pretty damn good. And the Not best result for the Challenger, these are cars with identical engines, but completely different chassis, completely different cars, style of cars. It did 469 foot. There was one it, foot That was difference. literally, that was the <laughs> genuine, there was no... You know, mockery and that. That was literally the result. That it is the genuine, genuine result. Now, admittedly, um, measuring is very hard, as we <coughs> said. So they could be slightly off. Um, so basically, I think it is fair to say they're pretty much even, uh, them two cars. Uh, the other results, yes. uh, I got a 400 foot and 361. Your other two were 351 and 158. So on average, the Challenger was the better of the two. But... Yeah, um, but Averages it, does it, not it count. Not. We do not care about averages. <laughs> okay. Um, so there we go. We drove some thousand horsepower muscle cars. Uh, that was fun. I, I do suggest you go and go try that out. They are huge fun to drive uh, and very, very tricky. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so the money. that is it. Yes. They are quite expensive to buy this stuff. So if you have lots of money on Forza, then go give it a go. That Daytona is ridiculous. It's like 400,000 for that. Or uh, that something else. Something like that, yeah, it's, roughly. It's insane. Um, but that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And now, before we go, uh, we're just going to let you know, Daniel has got exams coming up. Oh, no. Um, Yay for me. Over the next couple of weeks. So he might not be in as many videos. Um, I may be less frequent. It yeah. will only be for a couple of weeks because I think my, well, my exams personally finish on the 24th of May. So hopefully, between now and the 24th, it may go a bit skew with, we're not too sure yet, 
but after that everything will resume as normal hopefully so yeah so on the on Mondays and Wednesdays videos it may just be me uh, we will try our best to get the setup challenges on Thursday hopefully they will all be ready to go uh, so yes you, you may have to put up with me for a couple of weeks uh, hope you don't Good mind God. everybody uh, <laughs> uh, anyway yes thank you very much for watching and until next time goodbye